Hi, I'm Greg Hunter. Welcome to USAWatchdog.com. With us once again, a man who has uh, a little more than $2 billion under advisement uh, between the two funds, Euro Pacific Capital and Euro Pacific Precious Metals. We're talking about Peter Schiff. Peter Schiff joining us today from his home in Puerto Rico. Beautiful day down there, Peter. Thanks for joining us today on USA Watchdog. Sure. And by the way, Euro Pacific Capital and uh, Euro Pacific uh, Precious Metals, which we just changed the name to Schiff Gold, those aren't funds. Those are those are companies. And the couple of billion dollars you're referring to is not got nothing to do with uh, Europac precious or ship gold. There we buy gold for customers and we ship it out. Uh, uh-huh. But the money you're talking about is the money that we have at Euro Pacific Capital, and some of that money is actually actively managed by me, and some of it is just in brokerage accounts that we advise on. Well, uh, you're a big money manager, that's for sure. And well, I wondered- in the scheme of things, I'm pretty small. But well, <laughs> hopefully I'll be getting bigger. Well, uh, well, you're a smart guy, that's for sure. And right. we wanted to uh, wanted to get your views on what's going on in the you know U.S. dollar big reversal in the dollar and gold dollar down, gold up. Uh, what's going on in the markets? Why is the dollar so strong, and why has gold been so weak? Well, I think the reason is because people are foolish. You know, they don't actually understand the the fundamentals. See, the biggest disconnect right now is between the real uh, state of the U.S. economy and the fantasy land that a lot of investors believe exists. Everybody is of the opinion that the Federal Reserve's monetary policy worked, right? That because they did QEs 1, 2, and 3, and they kept interest rates at zero, the Federal Reserve saved the U.S. economy, they solved all the problems, and because the problems have been solved, we no longer need the Fed, they can end quantitative easing, they can raise interest rates back to normal, they can shrink their balance sheet by unloading the treasuries or letting them mature, the treasuries and the mortgage-backed securities, and that everything is fine. That is complete fantasy. I think there is a bigger disconnect now than there was just before the 2008 financial crisis or before the bursting of the dot-com bubble. The truth of the matter is the Federal Reserve didn't solve any of our problems. They made them all worse. And we're more dependent on QE now than ever before. So rather than raising interest rates next year, like everybody expects, I think they're going to launch QE4, which nobody expects. Because there is no end to this, right? The Fed has to do this indefinitely because the minute they stop artificially propping up this phony economy, it will implode. And what everybody is confusing is a bubble for a genuine recovery. It's not. In fact, the reason that the Republicans got a landslide victory in the most recent elections is because the economy is awful. It wasn't because the voters were embracing Republican policies or small government. You know, two of the states that ousted Democratic incumbents and elected Republican challengers also voted to increase the minimum wage in their states. So these are not Republican principles. These are just people who are frustrated with a lousy economy. But Wall Street doesn't know it's lousy yet because they've been, you know, so drugged up on cheap money. But as the, you know, as the effects of that cheap money wears off, uh, you know, the hangover sets in, and that's where we're headed. You know, I had an email from one of my subscribers, and he says, you know, I think you're a nice guy, but, you know, you talk about how how bad the economy is doing and how it will, you know, someday fall out of bed and crash, but it hasn't done that. Can you explain that? And my my thing was, uh, my answer to him was it's the biggest financial calamity in history, uh, and to ignore it, you ignore it at your own peril. Why hasn't the economy fallen out of bed yet? I mean... A lot of experts have missed the timing of the crash because of the, I mean, we just had another big Forex scandal where they're paying billions of dollars for manipulating that market. They manipulated LIBOR, uh, you know, U, uh, Union Bank of Switzerland, US, uh, UBS is uh, paying fines for manipulating the gold market. There's the mortgage-backed security market. Uh, you know, there's the bond market, the interest rates. Uh, it, it's just one big fraud fest. Is that how they yeah. kept this well, thing up? You know, this stuff always goes on longer than you expect. People were asking me the same question during the housing bubble, which I was warning about for years. They would say, well, nothing bad has happened, so what makes you think it's going to? And, you know, it's just inevitable. Uh, The fact that we've been able to postpone the day of reckoning for so long just makes the problems worse, which means the day of reckoning is worse because the longer into the future or the further back into the future we deal with the consequences, the bigger the problems are, and so the bigger the consequences. So just because it hasn't happened yet, doesn't mean it's not going to happen. In fact, right now, part of the reasons that we're able to continue this charade is because all the other countries, particularly Europe and Japan, are in so much trouble that people just assume that, well, you know, we're the safe haven. And they think that we're the only economy that's recovering, and we're not. It's just like a mirage in a desert. And the closer you get to it, 
uh, you know, you vent, eventually you find out that, that it's an illusion what you've been looking at. Because the only reason it appears that we're recovering is because we took more drugs than everybody else, so we're still high. But, you know, as the Fed has now weaned the, the economy from the QE, they're not doing nearly as much as they used to. I think we're headed back into recession. And what is the Fed going to do to avoid that recession? More QE. And maybe that's going to be the wake-up call, because the only reason we've been able to get away with it is because people believe it's temporary. They believe it's going to work. They believe the Fed has an exit strategy. When they realize it didn't work, it failed, and because it failed, it's never going to end. It's going to be repeated indefinitely that it's QE infinity, which is what I said from day one, that once we went down this road, we would never stop, that we would, you know, if we have an economy that lives by QE, that it would die by QE, and that's exactly what's going to happen. Uh, are you concerned about the record high after record high on the stock market? I mean, it's last week more record highs are made in the U.S. stock market. And to your point, I mean, I'm listening to the financial news and they say, oh, look, you know, consumer sales are up. I don't know if that's you know reflective of real true inflation, but consumer sales were up and new highs on the stock market and everything looks great. And you say, well, it doesn't look great at all. In fact, if you look beneath the surface of a lot of these headlines, you'll find that the news is not nearly as positive as the spin that Wall Street is putting on it. But look, the stock market gets it wrong a lot. A lot of times the market is rallying right before a major uh, economic implosion. And I think this is a head fake. I think the market rally is not going to last. I think we're going to have another big correction. I do think a bear market could be averted by QE4. But if the Federal Reserve actually does what people believe they're going to do, which is end QE and raise interest rates, then the market's going to collapse. Then we're going to have a vicious bear market. It's because I believe the Fed is going to cave in and cry uncle and, and you know, give the drug addicts on Wall Street exactly what they crave that I don't think the market's going to implode. But I do think the dollar will implode eventually. And so I think that's going to eradicate a lot of the nominal gains in U.S. stocks, which is why when I advise my clients, I'm telling my clients to invest – abroad to get out of the U.S. stock market and get out of the dollar to own stocks in other countries as a safe haven, uh, not only you know from inflation worldwide, but inflation in particular in the United States. I know you're big on gold, and we had a big reversal in gold last Friday. Uh, do you think the bottom is in on the gold and silver? I mean, we're at or near or below mining costs for these metals. I mean, silver is crazyville, and gold is yeah. certainly near, or at least for a lot of miners, it's at or below mining costs. Yeah, I think it's still too early to call a bottom, uh, but it's certainly possible. I've been saying that what I've experienced and I've been looking at the last few weeks certainly in the mining stocks, certainly looks a lot like capitulation, which is what you get at the end of a bear market. And I think some of the valuations in these stocks is absolutely ridiculous. I think it's almost like the mirror image of the dot-com bubble, uh, where there was extremely high valuations. Here you have extreme low valuations, and the sentiment is off the charts negative for the gold miners. And, and so I think it is very uh, suspicious for a bottom. And the reversal on Friday was a pretty good one. I mean, especially when gold started the day down about 15 bucks and finished, you know, $40 or more off the lows, substantial rally. But I, I would like to see the price of gold back above maybe 1250 in order to really feel more confident that we have a bottom. Because we might have to back and fill a little bit more. We might have to go back down. But, I, you know, I wouldn't wait. I mean, I think certainly prices are low enough that you should be buying. I mean, if, you, if you've been out of the market waiting for a bottom, don't wait, just buy, you know, because even if you're not buying the bottom, you're buying close enough to it that you're getting a tremendous value because trying to get the absolute bottom is almost impossible to do, and it probably guarantees that you're going to miss it by a wider margin than if you just bought now. Uh, so I don't think it matters whether the bottom is in or whether we have to make another uh, lower low. I think we're very close to it. You know, we also have the Swiss vote coming November 30th. Uh, there was a news story out on Friday that now the yeses are in the lead. That might be partially responsible for gold's rally. Uh, and, of course, if the Swiss do pass that, I think that's very bullish for gold. And it could be the first of many central banks. Maybe other citizens uh, will decide to rein in their runaway bankers and reclaim uh, their, their currencies. Uh, so, you know, we'll see if they do pass that. There's a lot of gold that they might have to buy or a lot of euros they're going to have to sell. Uh, so, you know, and the sentiment. I mean, this is the best, you know, negative sentiment you can ask for, for forming a bottom. And especially since the fundamentals, really, in my lifetime, I don't think have ever been this good for gold. Because normally you have a situation where you have central bankers 
that have positive real interest rates, and they're, and they're promising no inflation, price stability. Uh, and now what do you have? You have all the major central banks at or near 0% interest rates promising inflation. They're saying that price stability is now a dangerous thing because it's too close to deflation, and so we need at least a 2% inflation rate every year to provide a comfortable buffer zone. Uh, I've never seen a situation where you have so much money that's been printed and so much money that's going to be printed and that central bankers are promising to print, yet people aren't smart enough to know they should be buying gold. Well, so, they'll figure it out eventually. So what do you think happens between two, two predictions here, if you can, or at least what your sentiment is? Between now and the end of the year, what happens to gold, the stock market? Do we think we get out of this without a major dislocation or a force majeure, a failure to deliver? And then that's for 14. And what do you think is going to happen into 2015? Yeah, well, it was only about, what, six weeks left of the year, and so it's hard to know what's going to happen in the six-week time span. But what I do believe is going to happen as 2015 begins to unfold is I think the GDP numbers that we just got for the third quarter, my guess is that 3.5% print is going to be revised downward, maybe even below 3%. I think the fourth quarter is going to be less than the third quarter, so in the twos, and it's potentially it could be even in the ones. We'll see. But the economy is clearly decelerating from a GDP perspective. I think the first quarter of 2015 is going to be very weak. It might even be a negative quarter. And I think the building of negative numbers. And I do think that we can start to see a reversal in the gains we've made in lowering the unemployment rate early next year. I think a lot of companies have been reluctant to fire people because they've been waiting for this recovery to emerge. I think when they're disappointed and we don't get it, there can be a lot of pent-up firing. Meanwhile, the jobs that have been created are lousy jobs. I mean, we're still destroying full-time jobs and replacing them with low-paying part-time jobs, temporary jobs, service sector jobs. But I think as the negative news begins to mount, you're going to start to see a big change in rhetoric coming out of the Federal Reserve preparing the markets for QE4 and taking these rate heights off the table. And that at some point should really provide uh, the momentum to spark a turn in the dollar and in the gold market. Even if, you know, we may have already bottomed, but I think to see uh, that type of indication of an easier monetary policy when nobody expects it, that will really send gold prices much higher and reverse this big rally we've had in the dollar. You know, the dollar index is near four-year highs. We're at a seven-year high against the Japanese yen. And the reason the dollar has got so much support is because people think we're going to be printing less money than everybody else. When they realize we're going to be printing more money than everybody else combined, right, the bottom's going to drop out of the dollar. Peter Schiff coming to us from his home in Puerto Rico. I know it's windy, and uh, the computer moved a little bit, but wow, fantastic commentary. Yeah, this is the analysis. first interview I'm actually doing from out here on my on my, on my my deck. So, <laughs> Okay, well, you know, I'm so happy that you uh, took time out and uh, came on and gave us your analysis here on USA Watchdog. Yeah, Peter and, Schiff. Uh, you know, one thing, if people want to learn a little bit about why I'm down here in Puerto Rico, we just put out a video that you can watch. It's a half-hour video for free if you go to the website USTaxFreeZone.com. It's US Tax Free Zone. There's a half hour uh, video that, that we produced with Doug Casey about why so many Americans are now moving down to Puerto Rico and what the benefits are of coming down here. Ah, excellent. Very, very good. I hopefully you guys will put a link. Get, send me a link, and I'll I'll put a link after the, after the end of this. Uh, yeah, there's a method to my madness here. I, think, I I got gotcha. you, uh, Peter Schiff, Euro Pacific Capital, Euro Pacific Precious Metals. Thank you so much, sir, for joining us today on USA Watchdog. Hey, anytime.